What is going on guys, it's Brown Superman's Comics. In this video, I'm gonna give you my picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday, May 17th, May 16th, if it's DC Comics or Scout Comics for that matter. Anything distributed by Lunar, their FOC actually falls a day earlier, but we have some great picks this week. There's a lot of great picks. There's also a lot of great additional printings coming out. And I'm gonna throw a bonus in there. There's two trade paperbacks that are also hitting FOC that I think people should be aware of. And I'll let you know right up front, it is very indie heavy. Yes, we have the indie showcase. We will get into some of those particulars, but I only have three books on here from the big two, the big two being Marvel and DC, but we're gonna get into it right now. Starting with Image Comics, we're getting Geiger number three. That's right, that big Jeff Johns creator owned title. Love me some Jeff Johns. One of my favorite runs in all of comic books is Jeff Johns Green Lantern run. Geiger, no doubt, isn't like Green Lantern, but it is really, really good. And if you haven't been reading it, I highly suggest you pick it up. And there's a couple great covers for it. Next one I want to talk about is actually a new series from Image Comics and that great Skybound imprint. And we're talking about the six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton. I was able to get my hands on an advanced PDF for this. I am super excited about this one. This might almost be my pick of the week this week. But there's so many great books hitting FOC, I couldn't just pick one. But this is definitely up there. And here we have the most unliked action TV star. It comes up dead. It's up to his former TV sidekicks to find out what happened. This is written by Kyle Starks, art by Chris Schweizer, and it looks to be one hell of a ride and kicks off with the fantastic first issue. I actually like the cover C on this the best. It just kind of has that, fits the theme of the story, has that like TV movie poster look. So that's what I'm gonna pre-order as well as that cover A. I always like to pick the cover A up, especially when it comes to indie books. Next, back over to Dark Horse. I've been talking about this series since issue one. And when I say issue one, it's not like it's been that long. This is actually issue four of four, but it's still one of my favorites right now. And we were talking about that God of War. This is that series that bridges the gap between God of War 3 and that new God of War game that came out in 2018. Love, love, love God of War. It's one of my favorite PlayStation games. I've been picking up these God of War comics lately, ever since the first series, all the way up to this newest series. And like I said before, the Dave Raposa covers on each of these issues is absolutely fantastic. I pick it up for cover art alone, but stay for the story. And I still think there, it's just a matter of time before we get news from Sony that this property is being adapted into whether it's animated, live action, whether it's TV, whether it's movie, it's on the periphery. It's gonna come. I don't have I don't have any truth to that. There's a bunch of articles online saying, hey, this is gonna be, this is one of the best series to adapt. And I happen to agree with them. And while we're at it, post in the comments, if it gets adapted, say live action, who would you like to see play the man himself, Kratos? I have a pick. It's probably a pick that people don't have on the tip of their tongue. And to me, I would pick WWE NXT star, Tommaso Ciampa. Love that guy. And he would make a great Kratos. And getting over to Marvel for a second, we get Web of Spider-Man number one. Yes, another Spider-Man series. But hey, I like this one. I'm interested in reading it. Here we have Tony Stark opening a brand new science research center and who gets invited, but Spider-Man. But not only that, this is a science research for those teenage Marvel superheroes. So you never know what's going to pop up there. And it's going to feature some of the favorite faces across the whole Marvel universe. And they're saying that there's new gadgets in this science laboratory or science research center. So you don't know what could happen in this series. You know, is there going to be some new gadget that sticks to some character that is, that character becomes known for? Who knows? It looks like a fun story to read. And I love team books. Teen Titans, Young Justice, Champions. There's one of my, some of my favorite books to read. So I'm super excited for this one. But there's another reason why I like this book. There's a variant for this, it's a regular price variant. And it's called the Attraction Variant. And what I like about it, I'm a big Disney fan. Disneyland out in California, they are getting ready to open that new Avengers campus out there. And that variant features a cover that highlights that Avengers campus. So you never know what could happen there. Either way, as a Disney fan, I want to pick that cover up just to have to my collection because it's almost like a moment in time, right? Opening that great Avengers campus. That place is going to be huge. I wish Disney World would get it. But unfortunately, with Universal Studios being right there, 
they have a lot of those Marvel licenses and it keeps Disney from opening it at Disney World. But either way, I love that cover and I'm definitely going to be picking that one up. Also from Marvel's got that whole Heroes Reborn going on. Talked about how I'm not much into the tie-ins for this, but there's one that I'm actually interested in picking up. It's a one shot and here we get Heroes Reborn Night Gwen. Everyone knows Gwen Stacy, whether Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider, but here we get Gwen as Nightbird. That's right. She's the leading psychiatrist at Ravencroft, but at night she turns into a winged vigilante hunting down crime. And we want to find out how did this happen and why did this happen? And what does Kyle Richmond, the Nighthawk, have to do with it? And in this one shot, she takes on the Jackal. Then from DC Comics, we get that Future State with Future State Gotham number two. People are turning up dead. Everyone believes it to be the new Batman is responsible and Gotham wants justice and who vows to answer that call but none other than Red Hood big fan of Red Hood I've been enjoying some of the future state issues I haven't been reading all of them but I have been reading a lot of the Batman ones I like it because it's usually only two issues I can read two issues I could stick with it for that long but either way big fan of Red Hood but there's also a great regular price Derek Chu variant for this and one of the big big reasons is there's a one in 25 art germ variant and it's not the normal art germ that you see because a lot of art germ covers that i see is very vibrant and full of color Here we get dc sticking with that one in 25 black and white grayed out whatever you want to call it they got that they're sticking with that same theme for this art germ variant and usually lately you might see an art germ variant it's the regular price variant but then they have like the variation of that same cover as an incentive you don't have that with this issue it's just the one in 25 art germ Pick it up or don't. Moving on. Speaking of moving on, that's going to bring us into the indie showcase portion of this video. That's right. Brought to you by Black Cape Comics, blackcapecomics.com. You can pre order all the books talked about in this video. But being huge fans of indie comics like myself, they get the showcase brought to you by them. Love Benjamin at Black Cape. If you guys haven't checked him out, make sure you do so. Blackcapecomics.com, as I've said plenty of times. A lot of great comics on there. They got some great store exclusives and they have some great art prints. But the first one we're going to talk about in the indie showcase is from Boom Studios. Eve number two, first issue sold out so well. We're getting an additional print from that, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. But this is definitely one title worth mentioning in this video. Everyone I've talked to that has read issue number one, including myself, has actually really, really enjoyed it. It's and although issue number one has sold out and is going to an additional printing, you might want to check with your LCS, check online, see if you can get an issue number one and get caught up. Issue number two hits FOC this Monday, so it's still early. You can get caught up on this series and get in on the ground floor for such a great ride. Also sticking with Boom, we get win number seven. A lot of that's gone past that initial five issue run, so I'm happy to see that Boom's been doing that a lot lately. They throw stuff out there and it sticks with the fans. And they're like, just keep going. And I'm a big fan of that. And I'm also a fan, like I said before, with win number six. We got that great regular price Gonzalez variant. But there's also a 1 in 25 incentive. So if you like picking up those incentive ratios, this is a great one to pick up. My favorite, of course, is that Gonzalez variant. But what was originally supposed to be just a graphic novel got split up into single issues over the, right when COVID started to hit because they wanted to get comics into the hands of fans and great story and it's still going love that it's still going one of the best things it's got one of the highest writers in comics right now with James Tynan now when it's in FOC don't need to talk too much about it because everyone is well aware of this title but something is killing the children number 17 we saw issue number 16 give us that origin story here we're coming in with number 17 one good thing is I haven't seen too many store exclusives for no issue number 17. I'm sure there's some out there. But number 16 definitely had its plethora of store exclusives. But yes, issue number 17, head and final cutoff. Don't need to talk too much about it. Great story, great writer, which means it's got something in common with the last book I just talked about in win number seven. James Tynan is also writing Something's Killing Children. Also from Boom Studios, we get a new miniseries. It's going to be a five-issue miniseries. And we're talking about Good Luck number one and here we have what a group of teens called the unfortunates and they're called that way because they have absolutely zero luck and the worst thing is the world is plunged into chaos and 
They are relying on the unfortunates to save the world. Five issue miniseries. That right there is enough to have me pick this up and read it. Like I said, I love teen type books, right? And I love when the teen, when you got teen protagonists. I mean, I think that's a major reason why Stranger Things is such a great show on Netflix. Speaking of Netflix, talking about the unfortunates, talking about Zero Luck. This kind of reminds me of recent animated movie that just showed up on Netflix called Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Loved, loved, loved that animated movie. If you haven't checked it out, highly suggest you do so. And it's a fantastic family movie. So if you want one of those family movie nights, that's what we did in my house. Mitchell's vs. the Machines. My kids wanted to put it on. I went into it with lower expectations and came out of there like really, really enjoyed that movie. But good luck number one hits FOC Monday. If that's something that interests you, make sure you get your order in. And then from a blaze, we get Captain Harlock Space Pirate number one. This is a new story arc set within the same time frame of the Captain Harlock series. While Captain Harlock has been banished as a pirate, there is an invasion that takes place and that's not going to stop him from protecting against that invasion. Although that might not be enough to interest you. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I like pirates. Not so much into space pirates, but I do love pirate tales. So I'm definitely picking this one up just because of that. Pirates in space. Yes. It's been done before, but I keep going back for more. With that being said, the main reason why I have this issue in this video is there's fantastic covers for this by some banger artists. Talking about Mercado, who's done a bunch of great Power Rangers variants. Talking about Kendrick Lim or Kunkka, who's done so many great covers out there. We also have Derek Chu, as well as a bunch of other great comic book artists doing covers for here. So there's a lot of great variants for it, and they all seem to be regular priced. So if you have a favorite artist or a favorite cover, this is something you might want to pay attention to. This is one of the series that is one of the main purpose for this video, because I don't think a lot of people are aware, one, of this series, and then two, some of these fantastic covers that exist for it. Then from Aftershock Comics, we get a new horror series in Bunny Mask number one, sealed in the cave before Darn a Man, Gets released by a crazed man-man, so now Bunny Mask walks the earth once more. But what dark purpose does she use her supernatural powers for? And how does it tie into B. Foster, who is a young 14-year-old girl murdered by her father? Horror comics, Aftershock comics, love the two covers on these. But I mentioned right at the beginning of the showcase, Black Cake Comics does some great store exclusives. They have one amazing, gorgeous, beautiful store exclusive for Bunny Mask number one. I can't show it on the screen yet, but Black Cape will be revealing it this coming Monday. So if you want to see that, make sure you're following Black Cape Comics on Instagram and Facebook and tune in Monday for that reveal because I'm telling you right now, it is gorgeous. You want to get your order in for it because Black Cape has been selling through a lot of their store exclusives. So those are my picks. That's also the indie showcase, but I also mentioned there are two trade paperbacks hitting FOC this week. I don't talk about trade paperbacks too much in this video, but these are two that I think people might be interested in. And from IDW, we get one of the best all ages comic book series right now. And we're talking about Kanto with that Kanto 2 Hollow Men trade paperback hitting FOC. Make sure you get your orders in for that. One of the places I ordered it from was actually TFAW. They had it on sale on their website. So I pre-ordered it from there. Or you can also pre-order it from Amazon. And another one from Boom Studios, we get that Something is Killing the Children Volume 3. Those trade paperbacks have been selling really well. The Volume 1 first printing for that trade paperback is actually selling for like $40 on the secondary market. Last I looked. But great series. Great thing about trade paperbacks is you can binge those issues in one sitting. You don't have to worry about picking up all the floppies or single issues for it. But Something is Killing the Children Volume 3 also hitting FOC this week. Which brings us to the additional printings hitting FOC this week. From Marvel, we get Beta Ray Bill number two getting a second print, as well as Black Widow's number six getting a second print, and Heroes Reborn number one getting a second print. We're also getting Star Wars Bounty Hunters Alpha number one getting a second print, the Marvels number one getting a second print, and Venom number 34 getting a second print. From Wake Entertainment, we get Ascensia number five with a second print, and one of my favorite indie comic series right now from Mad Cave Studios, Nottingham. Nottingham number one is getting a fourth print. Nottingham number two is getting a third print. And Nottingham number three is getting a second print. And lastly, like I mentioned earlier in this video from Boom Studios, Eve number one is getting a second print. So there it is, guys. Those are my picks. 
That's the indie showcase. There's two bonus trade paperbacks as well as those additional printings. Make sure you get your orders in online. Make sure you check with your LCS, get your pre-orders in. And like I always say, a lot of times getting those pre-orders in, you get yourself a little bit of a discount and you also guarantee yourself a copy by securing it instead of running out on release day, hoping there's still a copy on the shelf. With that being said, guys, this is Brian with Submits Comics. See you guys in the next video. I shouldn't be standing with a heart that's so heavy I shouldn't be up with all the weight that I carry Don't know if it's right, but I'm sticking with you You're my only vice, I'm dependent on